Hi guys, Claudia Berlin here. So you will not believe, I've, I've literally just recorded this whole video, but because my Mac is about to die, um, it didn't record the audio. So I've just got video of me making hand gestures, so <laughs> I'm going to try and record it again. And that might be God telling me that I needed to speed it up a bit because it was quite long. So basically this is about a video I saw. Um, since I've been making videos about Meghan and Harry on YouTube, which isn't my usual thing that I do, but obviously I'm keeping track of it all, um, I've been being recommended different videos about them. And I, I wasn't really aware of just, just how much content was being churned out, um, how much of an industry there was around talking about them in a negative manner. And just how many like people watch that and how much comes out every hour, you know? I suddenly started getting recommended all these things with like these hit pieces on them. And I've been watching some of them. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't mind so much. Obviously, I don't like it. But if it's just a random YouTuber, okay, I mean, I, I think it's nasty and I think it's ill-informed. But you've got actual news channels doing this. And so I saw something by Sky News Australia. Uh, and this was three days ago. So it was it was suggested to me. It's got 540k views. So it's it's a lot of reach. Um, and I it was, it was of interest to me because it was titled like this. Prince Harry chose to marry a woman who would feed his resentment. Um, I was intrigued because of chose it implies that he's not really making much of a choice for himself. It's that old stereotype. Also, the quotation marks on feed. I can't, I still can't work out <laughs> what that's about. I don't think that is the right usage. But yeah, I was intrigued because it's by Sky News Australia. So very, very brief outline for people who are not from Britain. So um, we have Sky News here. Um, our Sky News is obviously very different to their Sky News. Um, it is biased still. I mean, we, we still have quite a bias. I mean, the most trusted news kind of channels we have are, we have the BBC News, we have Sky News, um, Channel 4 News. Uh, we've got GB News, which is not trusted. So you might hear a lot from GB News, but they're basically like a tabloid, but a channel, essentially. And they've been investigated by Ofcom, and apparently they're having really bad trouble trying to even get people on their channel at the moment. So they're, they're making a lot of noise, but they're not very respected here. But, but in this country, I mean, Sky and BBC are kind of, there is that invisible contract, absolutely. They're very different, deferential to the royals. You know, you don't really get Republican arguments. You don't get anti-monarchist arguments on there. It's all very fawning over them. But they try to present... They try to pretend they're not biased, basically. Obviously, they, they are. We also have a situation in this country where the left in this country, I don't know if it's the same way you're, where you're at. I know I've got a lot of American viewers, so hello if you're one of those. Um, we've got a situation where we used to have a strong left and a strong right, and the right has moved further to the right, and uh, our left is being destroyed as... Uh, the centre is now taking charge, which means people on the left are being completely destroyed and made out to be completely crazy and insane and cranks and dangerous and so too woke, etc. Uh, so we've now got a right that's further right than before and a centre which is now calling itself the left. So we, we don't have a left now, essentially. We have a centre and, and, a, and a right that's further than the usual right. It's not great here. So even our impartial and unbiased <laughs> news sources are usually quite centrist and deferential to the royal family. The host in this video, Sky News Australia, the host is, is just coming out with basically his own opinions, which aren't backed up by anything. And it goes on for about five minutes. So that was quite surprising because usually we, we wouldn't have that here. So let's get into it because I think it's worthwhile to look at these things. They're getting a lot of uh, views. So why not I kind of interrogate what they're saying and point out how dangerous it is. Uh, I've, I've transcribed it. I'm going to put the, the link is in the description box because I feel like it wouldn't be right for me to just give a response and not allow you to see for yourself what's being said because I could be lying, anything, you know. I, I'm very much on the idea that, you know, people should do their own research. Don't think something just because I say it. Like, it's fine to disagree with me. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Do your own research. I respect that very much. But you might not want to go on it and, you know, uh, support what he's doing and what the channel's doing. So I've transcribed it. It's only five minutes. It's okay. I'm going to read it to you. Oh, and the host is called Kel Richards. I don't know who that is. I'm not in Australia. Have you had your fill of Harry and Meghan yet? Now, I know there are a lot of people feeling rather Harry and meghan out at the moment. Well, brace yourself, because about 10 days from now, Harry's autobiography will be released, in which he will once again wash his dirty linen in public and show great disrespect for his family, and the headlines and the TV news will be full of it. So let's ask, what exactly is going on here? So again, it, you know, it's gaslighting. It's, it's, you know, have you had your feel of Harry and Meghan yet? Oh, we're feeling really Harry and meghan out. They don't have to do this. They are making a lot of money, a lot of outrage. They're getting a lot of clicks, so many views from talking about these people that they claim they want a media blackout on. It's the same every single time. It's gaslighting. Also want to note, there's a caption here and it reads, Prince Harry is about to play the victim again. And then underneath it says, real news, honest news. Uh, <laughs> just a bit dodgy. I f if they do say so themselves, I mean... I feel like that's worrying. If you have to say that you're real news, honest news, it makes me question why is someone asked, is someone questioning that? Like, 
methinks the news channel doth protest too much there. Um, again, you know, it's, it's the usual things that are used against abuse victims, and that's why I want to talk about this. It's not just about Harry and Meghan, it's, it's much bigger than that. They've become representatives of, of white culture and anti-racists, and, and the same arguments are used against abuse victims, people who call out power imbalances, people who want to change uh, power structures, right, and examine things. They are basically standing in for those people, and that's why we have to stand with them. Like, I am such an anti-monarchist, I'm such an anti-monarchist, like, to my core an anti-monarchist they are that's what they're representing and that's why the media's going in on them so much and that's why we've got to stand our ground with them on this i, I think anyway i hate the term you know wash his dirty linen in public because they, they say that to abuse victims right wash your dirty linen in public don't don't talk about it publicly it's fine to be a victim but don't talk about it you're disrespecting you're disrespecting people and i also want to i want to say this right they are freaking out in advance about this book i don't know what's in the book i mean but if they are they must have an inkling themselves that something bad's going to come out right because if they just think it's a book about Harry's life, wouldn't they just be like, well, that's that's interesting. I wonder what he's going to say. You know, they might think it's too much information because they like to keep the royal family kind of. They don't want people to realise they're just a, they're just an uh, I'm not they're not normal because they've not lived a normal life, but just they're just random people that got born in. You know, they're not these holy people chosen by God. They are just the same as everybody else, but with a different experience, privileged materially, probably emotionally quite traumatised. But you know, all this panicking. What are they expecting to come out? What's the real fact? They are freaking out, which implies to me that they know there's something that Harry knows and Harry could say and they're very afraid of him saying. And that makes me want, that makes me worry. And in fact, it's actually not working very well for the royal family and people like this, these outrage uh, journalists, are actually doing the royal family a great disservice because the more they hype this up, like what will Harry say, the more people are starting to think, wait, what? wait a second, <laughs> why are you so afraid? What are you trying to cover up here? Why are you so nervous about it? What do you think is going to be unearthed? Okay, he goes on to say, A lot of people are inclined to put the whole blame on Meghan. They think she's got Harry hypnotised. They think Harry has the IQ of a sea anemone. He actually says, like, amenity or anenity or something. He, he doesn't say it correctly. Unless they say that. If they say that that way in Australia, then that's my mistake. I'm sorry, but I don't think that's correct. And he is just being led around by the nose and has no idea of what's going on. But I think that lets Harry off far too lightly. May I suggest to you that he is a young man relentlessly driven by resentment, and the title of his new book, this autobiography, Out in a Week in a Bit, tells us about his resentment, because the book is called Spare. Now that refers to an old saying that applies to any royal family, in fact all aristocratic families, which is that the role of a wife is to produce an heir and a spare, that is to give birth to a first son, to be the heir, to take the titles and whatever goes with the titles, and a second son who will be spare, in case something happens to the older brother. There are earls in Britain today who never expected to be earls, but were thrust into the role because an older relative fell under a bus or whatever. That's the whole heir and spare idea. And he's he's right. But again, by accident, these very pro-royal people think they're trying to help, but they're actually pointing out that this system of monarchy is actually completely unjust. It shouldn't be in a normal family that, that a child and his brother that are very similar in age, one is the heir and one's the spare. You know, it's if you know about abusive family systems, we're looking at golden child and scapegoat. I mean, if you look back in history, you could argue that the spare's role is not just to be the backup, but also to take on all the negative press so that the the main one, the, the golden child, the one who's going to ascend to the throne, they seem very squeaky clean, right? So it's like a distraction technique. And this is something neither of those boys consented to. Harry and William did not consent to that. And obviously, I think it seems William, it to my I don't know anything in particular from what's been said. It seems that William's kind of become part of the system by now. Really, it doesn't seem very good. As children, at least, they are both victims of this. And if you understand about golden child scapegoat dynamics, that is something that's being inflicted here, but on a massive scale. This is on the media scale. You exist for that. It's it's very awful. You know, it, it sounds like a terrible, terrible system. And, and the idea that it's wrong to be resentful about that is completely wrong. I would support William if he was resentful about that. <laughs> Neither of them got a good deal in, in any of this, honestly. You know, the very idea of an heir and a spare in the modern age is quite disgusting anyway. You know, oh, you have to have one child in case the other one, the other one dies and the other one can't inherit. We are in 2022. It, it shouldn't run like, like that. You know, they are accidentally pointing out all the Republican arguments about why the royal family has no place today. You know, and, and I just want to say really quickly that, you know, I'm so anti-monarchy. But I feel like with this whole situation, these are the death flails now of the monarchy and the people who support the monarchy because it's just falling apart. They are panicking because they know they're at the end and that's why it's become so vicious, I believe. Um, there were people who, I've always, I'm very anti-monarchy, I don't think it can exist or should exist. Um, but there are people who've said maybe it can change, maybe it can grow, maybe it can, uh, can modernise. 
we've seen with Diana that was a refusal and that I'd say Meghan was their last chance honestly I think they had a chance to modernize with Meghan and Harry they've doubled down they've messed it up and I think they've doomed themselves I think the royal family and the firm have completely doomed themselves and all these people carrying on like this are making it worse I think ironically if they were more quiet about all this the royal family would probably survive a bit longer but I think they're on the way out he goes on to say for Harry to call his book spare shows us he is obsessed with this fact and that's gaslighting because he's reclaiming something that he's been called he didn't he hasn't woken up one day and called himself that you know it's like oh look at him self-pitying for being the spare no it's not normal is it if we think about the royal family as just normal people you know or at least human beings with full emotions that were all innocent children at some point they didn't ask for any of this why wouldn't you be resentful about it imagine being born as a mascot to something that you don't consent to to something that the politics of which you know you're taught is this unbiased thing that the people love but you grow up and there are you know anti-monarchists are probably against you not not as you personally as a child but you'd feel that as a wound to your family then finding out about the actual history of what your family represents realizing that your family is also a business that you're operating on a very public scale what a terrible, horrible thing to go through, essentially. I, d I don't think it's good. I wouldn't change for it. I wouldn't change. Would you? Would you switch out with them? I wouldn't. But any any therapist, any psychologist, anyone interested in family trauma, dysfunctional tra uh, families, abuse systems, oppressive systems, would accept that this isn't a good system. You know, someone being raised as a spare is bad. And we, we know that Diana tried to... She was worried about that because, you know, she would call him good King Harry because she didn't want him to feel left out and like he didn't mean anything. I, I'm honestly surprised that Harry and William's relationship lasted as long as it did because I can't imagine how those two little boys, even with the terrible trauma they went through, were able to retain a bond for so long in a system that basically makes one of them good and one of them bad, one of them the backup act, one of them the main one. That's not right, and you wouldn't, be honest, you wouldn't want it for your children. Who would? Who would want that for their children, for it to always be unequal, for one to feel like they were propping up the other? And it's not been easy for William either, the golden child feeling like they're born into this role and all eyes are on them and they have to be perfect. It destroys natural family dynamics and friendships and that's sad. That is something that should be grieved and I imagine Harry probably is grieving that. What that book title tells us is that he deeply resents, apparently all his life, the fact he was the second born, that he's not the heir and that he'll never be king. And this is interesting because I talk about patriarchy a lot on this channel. I won't get into it in too much detail. I did when I recorded this before and it went on too long. It's a, It deserves a video of its own about how patriarchy plays into all this. But what I will say very briefly is that in Harry they have a real problem because Harry has been raised up as great. He's, he's very traditionally masculine in terms of he was a soldier and he's very physically fit physically able you know he's, he's quite assertive he's all those things that patriarchy supports he's also an absolute threat to them all because he's a modern man who despite having all those advantages and could sail through patriarchy is actually questioning the system feels equal to his wife wants to uplift his wife wants to uplift his daughter wants to raise his son differently he is a huge problem and he represents a whole, a whole generation of people who don't want to change, who don't want to question things, who want to hold on to masculinity, have got a problem with Harry now. He is so dangerous because he, he could have just sailed through, right, on toxic masculinity, but this man has actually decided not to. They're some of the most dangerous ones to these people because they prove that that you don't that isn't that isn't the one way to be a man. There's lots of ways to be a man. You can be a good, kind husband. You can care about women. You can want to learn and grow. Uh, and you'll notice part of his uh, part of what they do to make him seem less masculine, to emasculate him, and to make him feel less powerful. Uh, he, so ob obviously they pretend that he's in the in the in the grip of, of you know Megan is controlling him essentially they pretend which is awful but what they also do if they're trying to be clever which this one does is they make him a little boy so the takeaway is adulthood right they make him a tantruming little boy who's angry that he'll never be king which is something he's not said right he's angry that he's the little brother that's not true but they're making him into a tantruming child watch out for that they do that to abuse victims all the time it's a really i say good it's awful it's a way they can do that to male abuse victims especially especially in a patriarchy they can do that you're a little boy you're either in the power of women you're womanly yourself or you're a child right your adulthood your masculinity is taken from you as a victim because men aren't allowed to be victims men aren't allowed even though i would argue that being proactive enough to to point out an injustice makes you very strong really and also even more strong to be able to look at your own wrongdoing or the things your own bias and change it i think that makes you very strong as a person regardless of your gender he goes on to say well resentment is a bad thing to build a life on but it's looking rather as though that's what harry seems to have done he chose to marry a woman who would feed and support this resentment resentment is a bad thing to build a life on it's also a bad thing to build your career on especially a journalistic career let's let's not this is gaslighting as well i don't need to tell you this their whole output 
is hating on the imagined monsters they've made of Meghan and Harry, right? It's like a fairy tale. They're all delusional and they feed into their own delusion. They keep pretending that they're more and more monstrous and it gets worse and worse and worse. And then it, it becomes so different from the actual Meghan and Harry we see in interviews that they end up arguing with caricatures they've made themselves. It no longer bears any resemblance to reality, right, and to these actual real people. But also I'm interested in he chose to marry a woman who would feed and support this resentment, and to me that feels slightly racial. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's, it's, all, it's the implication that he chose her for a reason because she was an outsider. Because he wanted to feel persecuted, right? And it blames them for their mistreatment. They're trying to imply that Harry deliberately chose someone who was mixed race because what what are they trying to argue because he's because he wanted them to face racism so he could be hard done by like is that what they're arguing in which case that's not what happened but even if that was what happened hasn't it proved that there is racism like it doesn't make sense these arguments you scratch the surface on them they don't make sense i implore people to please think about these things that are being just put out there and put out there like think about how it doesn't make sense it drives me mad sometimes i feel like i'm mad like if you step back from these systems I feel like that about monarchy itself sometimes. I think about the fact that just these random people are born in, they don't have a choice. And then they're, you know, like chosen by God or something, you know. It's so many systems when you start unlearning stuff, just start to... And I feel I feel bad for Harry in this because he's having to unlearn all that. And I liken him to... I'm very interested in the Westboro Baptist Church in Topeka, Kansas, which is in, in the US. And they are... They're not a cult, but they um, are a very extreme religious group and they're very homophobic. And basically they will banish people who don't exactly follow their rules um and it's very difficult for the children that are born in and uh, one of my favorite people in the world really i think because i admire her for this is, is megan phelps roper who left the westboro baptist church and her story is one of unlearning something you know feeling like you were living something normal and then questioning things and because you question them you lose your whole family and that's that's very similar i feel so what harry might be going through because the family and the business are one just like for megan the family and the religion were one you can't leave one without the other it seems that Harry's being punished for leaving the business. It's like you can't retain your family if you leave the business. And that's so cruel. He goes on. He's chosen to publicly criticise his family for treating him as the spare, not the heir. I mean, what exactly he expected his father, King Charles III, to do, I can't imagine. Declare both his sons legal heirs. Declare that on his death they would share the throne. To declare that son number one, William, was out of the running. And make Harry the heir instead. Now, first of all, again, Harry's not said he wanted to be the king or that he should have been the king. Also, yes... This man, this this man has accidentally stumbled upon the argument that those of us who are anti-monarchy are making. It isn't fair, is it? You wouldn't... In an ideal world, if you've got two kids, you'd share things between them. I have a little brother. He's, like, the light of my life, my best friend. Like, we are absolute best mates, honestly. There's, like, just over a three-year difference between us. And, you know, say our, our, one of our parents, you know, had something for us. Of course, not, we I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm the older, I should get it. Or Dan being like, oh, I'm the boy, I should get it. We're in 2022. We'd be like, let's share it. <laughs> <laughs> you know let's share it um that's normal behavior you know he's pointing out that the monarchy doesn't work in this modern age because it shouldn't be that two brothers are in that situation it, it, it just it's the seeds of resentment being sown between those two boys for something out of their control completely out of their control he goes on because only something as dramatic as that would heal the resentment that seems to be eating up harry from the inside and of course none of those moves are legally possible king charles and prince william are bound by the laws of england and the law of precedence just as harry is it's out of their hands and once again he stumbles upon the reason why none of it makes sense and these people they think they're so pro-monarchy they are destroying the monarchy because they are they're kind of pulling the curtains open right we can kind of see through it by accident because they're making such a fuss it's it's such an own goal for them honestly you know the idea that he says that charles and william are bound by the laws of england and the laws of precedence right sure okay they are so that doesn't make sense today does it so they either need to change the laws or get rid of the system if the system won't change those are the two options and we know the system won't change so that leaves us with get rid of the system because we are in 2022 now they're making these these arguments they don't seem to realize what they're doing they are actually contributing to the end of the monarchy i truly believe because it doesn't make sense if you think about it if you actually think about how mad it is as a, as a concept it doesn't make sense it makes less and less sense the more you think about it <laughs> okay uh, yeah also the idea that people are bound which is harry has said before he feels that they're all trapped in the system and i'm sure they are i mean i'm not excusing adults in that family for what they do and if they're part of it like at all i'm not excusing that but as children they're they're bound to it and he said that they're trapped he's i'm sure the tabloids have a lot of terrible stuff on them because if, if the tabloids you know they're very deferential to the to the to the royals but they've shown their hand they've shown what they'll do to people who fall out of line right who step out of line that's a threat to the ones that are in 
unfortunately it seems many of them have gone along with it to save their own skins but you know it's a horrible situation he goes on to say that leaves harry in much the same position as the late duke of windsor the man who very briefly was king edward the eighth and who abdicated giving up the throne for wallace the woman he described as the woman i love dicky as he was known by the family lived the rest of his life in resentment at not being king i think he had apparently believed that parliament should change the law as it then stood and allow him to marry wallace and remain king didn't happen and the rest of his life was consumed by a destructive cancer of resentment and bitterness sadly harry is quite possibly choosing to go down the same path if he does it's his own choice so perhaps we shouldn't blame megan quite as much as many people are keen to do and what do you think the future holds for the couple where do you think their lives will be in five years from now or ten years from now they have given up royalty for celebrity and celebrity is a notoriously fickle thing i mean most celebrities have something they can do to earn their place in the celebrity circuit they can sing or they can act or they're pop stars or movie stars or like the kardashians they're big tv stars Harry and Meghan have only one profession, attacking the royal family. That's it. That's what they do. It's all they do. Now, there's a number of things here. I'm sure you've, you've noticed. You're probably getting used to these videos by now and you probably are spotting them. This is where the English lit came in well for me. <laughs> and also a lot of stuff in my life, like trauma work, looking at abuse systems, oppressive systems, victim by me. It's all coming together. So I feel like this is quite easy to pull apart. I hope it is for you, you guys too. So he's saying that Harry's life essentially is, is going down the path of being destroyed by a destructive cancer of resentment and bitterness. Um, of course, that's how they present people who want to change systems, people who challenge systems, abuse victims, people who speak out about what they've been through. They've got to be resentful. They've got to be ungrateful. They're airing their dirty laundry. Again, always when a victim starts speaking or when people know something bad's going to come out that a victim's going to say, if this person is being preemptively, like people are already trying to give you reasons not to pay attention to them before they've spoken, that's how you know something dodgy's going on here. They are very afraid of whatever's going to come out, which makes me think there is more probably coming out. <laughs> Which makes me think there's more that he could say, whether he says it or not is his own business, but they're really scared about it. They are now doing a hit job on, on Harry, because the hit job on Meghan, they've tried that, but they haven't broken him down yet. So now they're trying Harry. They're trying to make him a bitter little boy, an angry little boy. They're trying to make him, also they're trying to make him seem, you know, vain and useless. You know, masculinity, I can't remember if I've already spoken about this in this video, I think I probably already have, but, you know, Harry's masculinity is interesting. Harry is a soldier, right? And... It's a very dangerous path to go down, talking about how he doesn't really do anything and hasn't doesn't have any skills. You know, he has been in the army. I'm not a fan of the army, personally. You know, not, I've got nothing against soldiers themselves. I think they're often really good people who want to do what's right and sacrifice a lot. And then they get treated absolutely appallingly by the government because they'll be cannon fodder. They'll be, they'll be put into wars that maybe aren't very just. And then they'll come home and then they're completely let down. They're not given mental health care. They're just left. They're left with trauma. And it's really, really awful. But, um, but we have got Harry who was in the army. And suddenly that means nothing. It's a very, very dodgy path to go down because then we start looking, it backfires because we start looking at the other royals, right? Of the royals, I would say Harry and Meghan probably have the most about them that, by that metric. I don't believe in judging people by that metric. Everyone's got their own skills and their own value. But for example, Meghan had her own career before she married in. Meghan was a, a, an activist and, a, and a, an actor, right? She had her own life. Harry has served in the military. Uh, you don't want to follow that line of questioning because then you start thinking, oh, what's William done? What's Kate done? And then you start thinking, oh no, maybe maybe these people shouldn't actually have been. Like, you know, maybe they, they don't have much to offer. It's a, it's, a, it's a dodgy line of thought. I'm surprised they're going down it and it's, it's such an own goal because you start thinking about it and you start thinking, wait a minute, Kate didn't have a job. What's Kate doing? <laughs> you know, they, they say... It's always so, it's so interesting, you know, when they say that Megan has no talent. And I don't believe that anyone in this world has no talent. I think everyone's got talent for something, even if they don't know what it is. They'll say that about someone who's already got a career and had a career and gave a lot of stuff up. What does that mean for Kate Middleton? If you're judging by that metric, you know? I'm not judging by that metric, but by that metric, you're putting her down, right? You must be. And again, the celebrity thing, the vanity thing, the masculinity thing. Harry is quite... Um, He's, he's, I will make a proper video about this, but he does fit masculinity in some ways, but he's also a very modern sort of masculinity. We have this thing where in this country we call people beta males or soy boys and we mock them for basically respecting women and wanting to question masculinity itself and question gender roles and things, which is a really healthy thing to do and to me is a sign of strength. Anyway, but the idea that he's a celebrity, you know, you'll often see him being called now, I've seen recently him being called vain, you know, oh, he's obsessed with what he looks like and all these kind of things. And that's meant to be a way to emasculate him, remember, because men 
men aren't supposed to think about those kind of things you know he can't care about his personal appearance you know oh isn't he vain isn't he the implication in patriarchy is that he's so womanly oh he's he's womanly he's thinking about how he looks rather than just thinking that he's a human being who's been in front of the cameras his whole life and has every right to think about how he looks it's fine if people don't want to it's fine if people do want to <laughs> we should get rid of those gender roles like People should do what they want to do. Okay, and then he goes on. But that's a career that can't last forever. When they've dug up their last piece of dirt, done their last piece of mockery, their career is over. And what will they do then? I mean, they might reinvent themselves, but their future looks fragile to me. Will King Charles II strip them of their titles? I mean, I doubt it, considering King Charles II is long dead. <laughs> doubt it maybe his ghost will come and do it um he misspoke i'm sure he means king charles the third i thought they would have caught that you know if you're gonna do a hit piece at least get it right why also why why like they haven't mocked their their last piece of mockery there's been no mockery they've dug up their last piece of dirt what do you mean dug up so, <sighs> these people you know I, I you obviously can see it i can see it but it's worth, like, they repeat these things and they become truth because they repeat them, right? This idea that they're mocking the royal family, there's no evidence of any of this happening, but it keeps getting repeated and so people think it's true, just through repetition, and that happens in abuse. When you think about abuse victims, right, you'll think about someone who's uh, dramatic or self-absorbed or they're really difficult. You'll hear those things over and over and over again until it starts to land, some of it starts to land. That's why they'll throw some things out which are completely outrageous because they won't stick, but some things will. Some things will stick. And that's why we need to point them out. Okay. Uh, last it says, The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, I don't think so. I think Charles is going out of his way to avoid being publicly negative about his son. Rather, he's behaving quite graciously towards them, considering the way they've behaved towards him. And King Charles is focused on monarchy, not celebrity. It's clear that he's focused on the long term, the bigger picture. Celebrity comes and goes. Monarchy's in for the long haul. So no, I don't think he'll strip them of their titles. I would disagree that monarchy's in it for the long haul. And I think that these these... They present Harry and Meghan as having a tantrum for talking about their own mistreatment and experience. These are tantrums, right? These people know the monarchy's on the way out. They know that something that's made them a lot of money is on the way out. They know that people are changing, right? People are questioning systems. All, all across society, in loads of different ways, we're, we're questioning the way things are done, the way we think about things, and that's really good, and that's really healthy. They know the monarchy's not going to survive that. <laughs> they also know that the media, the tabloid media, is not going to survive that. And that's part of the reason they hate Harry and Meghan so much, because they're exposing the tabloid media, right? They have the resources to do it. So when people say, oh, I don't care about it because they're rich and famous. Okay, but we <laughs> thank goodness that they are in this instance, because this will affect all of us, right? The tabloids are complete scum. The tabloids are nasty. They make people hate each other. They make the most vulnerable people turn on each other. They they hide the real problems in this country and they put like a soap opera on it, right? They, they, they don't help us unite together and help each other. They make us hate each other. They make people who are vulnerable hate each other and turn against each other. So the people at the top just continue getting richer and richer and everyone else suffers. That's all they do interesting as well um, you know he's behaving quite graciously towards them they don't know prince they don't know charles right they don't know him they have this imagined idea of a king he's just a guy i'm sorry to break that to you and i'm sorry to say that about elizabeth as well you know they were just people they were just humans and that that's considered to be something you're not supposed to say they, they were just people put born into this role that they never asked for that they never really consented to they are just people and people project so much onto them you know they want so much from them but they are just people you know, they, sure, they've been made out to be our mascots. They're just human beings. You know, they are just human beings. They're not saints. They're just people. They imagine that, you know, all they know is that Charles has been silent. But think about how they, how they, they're not just saying Charles hasn't made a comment, as real journalists would. They're saying he's behaving graciously. Out of kindness, he's not being negative about Harry, even though he could be. Think about that manipulation, that wording and the way they're doing it. The, the real fact is he's not said anything. That's all we know, but they're spinning it. And last of all, so what does that mean for Harry and Meghan? It means that just like the Duke and Duchess of Windsor before them, they'll, under, they'll end up with titled but empty lives. Any life built on a foundation of resentment can never be a happy one. What a cheerful ending that is. Um, I would argue that, that this career that you've built on a foundation of resentment and, and lies and uh, creating pantomime villains out of real people so that you can consistently hate on them for things they haven't done or said is probably, you know, that's not happy, is it? That's not happiness. But, you know, they, they'll end up with titled but empty lives. And it's it's this obsession, it's this nasty, abusive... This is what I mean when I say the media is involved in the abuse. It's that idea that an abuse victim comes forward and it's like, you're going to live a sad, empty, pathetic life. We're going to make life hell for you. And that's why I'm making these videos, because if you're an abuse victim, right, if you are a victim of oppression... 
you've heard these things now on not on this scale and not in the papers but you will hear them right because abusers are very very good at this they are so good at doing this in your friendship groups in your workplace right you will be made out to be difficult self-absorbed uh childish right um things from your past will get dragged up to discredit the things that have happened to you you will find yourself smeared and caricatured right if we can recognize these and stand up against them in the media we can do this better in our day-to-day -day lives and it's so pervasive and i i didn't even know how i didn't realize how much content was coming out about this um i wasn't intending to make content myself about it refusing it but especially coming from that position and coming at it from that social justice lens and from that oppression lens and that idea of people who are in abuse systems the people who are in abusive families or toxic dysfunctional families people setting boundaries i feel like people can relate to this and it's worth making this so that we can kind of go through it a bit and explore it really uh thank you for watching um, I want to reassure you guys, there's some of you guys that are from the US um, who are new and watching this, hi, and um, I know the tabloid press is really loud, and I've had some comments saying that, you know, thank goodness, you know, like a British person who doesn't think Megan's evil, I guarantee you there's a lot of us out there that hate the tabloids, we're more quiet, they have a lot more power than us, and are, you know, there is some sort of unspoken contract where the TV, you know, you won't get people who are anti-monarchy or people who really support Harry and Meghan on the television very much, right, Not very rarely anyway it's very skewed but there's a lot of us out there and the, the tabloids are vile here and uh, it's not just been to harry and megan they they hack phones they um they stir up hatred towards minority groups uh, they turn the most vulnerable people against each other essentially so they're really evil and, and there are a lot more people than you than you would realize who support harry and megan and, and people in their situations they're just not as loud as the tabloids but don't be worried about that like there's a lot <laughs> okay so um, if there's anything you want me to comment on that i don't see you know please just let me know in the comments you know if something comes out you want me to speak on i'll try to um i don't really know where i'm going with this channel right now I, I i'm so angry i didn't expect to make so many of these about megan and harry but i'm so angry about it and i think it relates so much to what i've spoken about before on this channel about family dynamics and abuse victims and victim blaming in society all these different things so i thought it'd be useful to kind of look at as a case study but anyway I love you loads. Hope you have a really good new year. Um, if this comes out after new year, because I haven't edited it in time, then um, hope you had a really good new year. And I uh, love you loads. See you really soon. All right, love you. Bye.